So the final couple of weeks of the season underway, we've got the indoor hardcourt season for the end of the year for the men, and also the WTA final is coming up pretty quick for the ladies. We did have a couple of tournaments last week, though, as the end of the Asian swing. Let's go have a look at who won those events. So over on the WTA, we had three events, all 250 events, with the Zhang Chi Open, Sinia Kova beating Buzkova in that final, 167676. That was an epic finale to the Asian swing for the ladies. Then over at the Transylvania Open, we had Korpash taking out Ruse, 6364 in the final there. And at the Jasmine Open, we had Mertens winning 6 3 6 love against Paolini in that final. And that wraps up the WTA for pretty much everybody because we have the Elite Trophy next week, which is only the players between 9 and 20 in the world. And then, of course, the WTA final. So the WTA is effectively over for the rest of the season. Over on the men's side, we had three tournaments as well. An ATP 500 event, the Japan Open. Ben Shelton winning his first ever title, 7 5 6 1 against Karatsev in that final. And both got a boost in the ranks. Over on the indoor hard courts of Europe, we had the European Open with Bublik taking out Feast 6464 in that final. And then in Stockholm, Monfils wins another trophy 467663 to beat Kotov in that final. And all those guys did get a little boost in the rankings as well. So let's have a look at the players outside the top 10 that have gone up in the rankings. Starting with Shelton, who's gone up five spots, number 14 in the world. That's a career high for him after winning in Tokyo last week. Bublik, he also goes up to number 30 in the world after winning in Antwerp last week. That's six spots higher than last week. And on the WTA, Sinia Kova goes up 16 spots number 44 in the world after winning a tournament last week as well. So some big boosts in the rankings for players outside the top 10. Players that have gone down to the rankings in the last week. Gasquet, he's gone down 7 spots number 69 in the world after losing points from this time last year. Berrettini, he's gone down 26 spots number 89 in the world. Of course, out with injuries, so he's still dropping down the ranks. And Bianca Andreescu, she's gone down 14 spots number 92 in the world after losing a lot of points from this time last year. So some massive drops for some well-known players outside that top 10. Let's start with the WTA rankings now because there were some changes. All the points have been stripped from last year's WTA finals. Sabalenka stays at number one with Fiontek at two and Goff at number three. We do have a change in the middle with Pagula dropping down to five and Rabakina going up to number four ahead of the WTA finals happening in a week's time. Also a little bit of change to the middle of the top 10 with Zachary dropping down three spots to number nine. Von Drusova going up two spots to number six. Jabir staying in there at seven and Mukova also going up a spot to number eight. So Zachary losing all their points from last year's WTA finals has dropped down the rankings, making way for all those other players that have qualified. So now the rankings will start to mirror what the WTF finals will look like. And Krajikova, she jumps in to the top 10 again because of Garcia dropping out, losing all the points from the WTF finals last year after she won that event last year, remember? So some big changes there to the WTA heading into the final two weeks of the year. Over to the race of the finals, and there is no change with Sabalenka at one, Fiontek at two, Goff at three, Rebecca at four, Pagula at five, Jabur at six, Von Drusova at seven, and Mukova at eight. That is the top eight. They're all going to be playing in Cancun at the WTF finals. So the two alternates are going to be Sakari and Krajikova. Now Krajikova is actually playing doubles in Cancun for the WTF finals and Sakari is not playing the elite trophy next week. So those two players will step in if there is a withdrawal. And like I said, Mukov has been struggling with injury pretty much since the US Open, and jabur has got a knee problem. So there is a very likely chance we do get Zachary playing, and then Krajikova, of course, is going to be there because she's also playing doubles anyway. So wouldn't be shocked if we do get one of the alternates jumping into that top eight. All right, heading over to the ATP rankings now, and no change because not too many big names played this week in the top 10. Djokovic staying at one with Elkaraz at number two. Medvedev will stay at number three with Suna at four. Rublev at five. Runa stays at number Number six with Sidzi Pass at seven, Root at eight. But we do have a change down the bottom with Fritz going up to number nine and pushing Zverev down to number 10. But we do have a lot of those guys playing. In fact, eight of that top 10 are playing next week, either in Basel or Vienna. The only two that are not are Djokovic and Alcaraz. So it's going to be a big week next week. And of course, a lot of players are trying to get to the ATP finals with only three weeks to go. And most players only playing two events over the next few weeks. It's going to be interesting to see who can play well. Going over to the race of the finals and still only the four players qualify with Djokovic, Elkaraz, Medvedev, and Sinner. But Rublev at number five is just a couple of wins away from qualifying, and he is playing in Vienna next week. Tsitsipas stays at number six, with Zverev at seven and Runa at eight. But Fritz is at number nine, only 100 points behind Runa, and Rude is at number 10. And there's a lot of players that are just outside the top 10 that are also potentially going to jump in the top 10 over the next few weeks if they have good weeks. So the race of the finals is far from over. We've got four spots left. You'd expect Rublev to qualify, but guys like Zverev and Runa really
really have to be careful not to lose early like they have been the last few weeks because they really need some points to get to that finals. So there it is. Almost the end of the year. The WTA is effectively over with just the two finals tournaments to go and also the Billie Jean King Cup. But there is three weeks left on the men's side. Next week is going to be huge. Two 500 events. And then, of course, Paris being the massive 1,000 event. That should be where we wrap it up. And then they've got tournaments after that. But we'll see who plays those. And then the A to B finals. And then we're over for 2023. But let me know down in the comments below. Who do you think is going to make it to the A to B finals? Rublev is pretty much in. He just has to play a couple more matches and he should be fine. But I reckon Rune is going to struggle. Don't forget guys like Shelton, Paul, Dimonor, Hercatch. They're outside of the top 10 for now. But if they keep playing well, or if they have a couple of good weeks, things could really change quickly. But they're the rankings for this week. Not too many changes in the top 10, but we do have a lot. The ATP Finals race is really starting to look interesting.